They have an amazing number of more than 3.2 billion application downloads as some of the top advertisers are their clients such as Coca-Cola, Disney, eBay and Groupon. Fixo is the Finnish word for smart and the word for vice president, international client management is Benjamin Hans. Please welcome to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's feeling good after last night. Uh, my name is Benjamin Hans. Um, I work for Fixu. And uh, for those who don't know, Fixu is a one-stop shop for all your mobile marketing needs. Um, and I'm here today to talk about the challenges um, that app developers find in mobile marketing. So first off, um, if you don't know Fixu, just more of a, an introduction. Um, and why we're here talking today. Um, we, we speak from a position of experience. Um, these numbers are a bit out of date. Um, we have now more like 900 clients. Uh, we've generated over 3.3 billion downloads. Um, our apps that we've promoted, uh, app campaigns that we've done, is in excess of 3,000 now. Um, so you can see we have a lot of data and we have a lot of experience in this. Over the last four and a half, five year, four and a half years, um, yeah, we've, we've really seen pretty much everything that there is to see. So, um, I don't think I need to tell any of you why we're here uh, talking about mobile, because there's a huge opportunity. We call it the billion dollar opportunity. Um, there's a lot of great stats here. We all know this, um, that it's, it's huge. Uh, but it's good to put numbers around it, right? Um, two things I want to call out to your attention specifically is that 75% of adults engage with their phone um, 15 minutes after waking up, within 15 minutes of waking up, right? Um, the next is smartphone, uh, smartphone users interact with their phone 150 times on average a day. 150 times. That's, uh, that's quite a lot of touch. That's quite a lot of presence. That's kind of a lot of, a lot of face time. Um, so you can see other numbers here that really motivate things. Um, in terms of scale, if you look at the number of PCs that are being shipped or expected to ship in 2014, it's about 300 million. The same number for or, um, looking at smartphone devices or tablets, it's about 2 billion. That's more than a factor of six. So again, right there, you can see the scale. And if you look at the growth, smartphones, tablets, iPods, all these devices, all these mobile devices are growing exponentially. The reach is absolutely amazing. So um, on marketing on mobile, you have two choices. You can do mobile web or you can do an app. Um, you should do you know, kind of everything. Um, but in our preference uh, is, is for the mobile app, and here's why. Uh, a mobile website is just like a desktop site, right? Um, the mobile app has a lot more advantages to it. One is it's a multi-event marketing kind of tool. Not only do you have the banner, the thing that draws you into the app store, but then you have your app store landing page. Whether it's Google Play or iTunes app store, um, you have real estate there that you can actually shoot out another message to, the client, uh, to your customers, to your community, right? Once they download the app, then you have a persistent um, presence on their device. Uh, an app is always on the phone until you uninstall it, of course. But a mobile website is only a one-shot one thing. An app is always there. Um, so we really appreciate this, what we would say, kind of multi-event marketing channel uh, that apps provide. Um, overall, with apps being undervalued, we do see that there's the huge opportunity comes huge challenges as well. Um, this is a story of you know, good thing, bad thing. Good news, bad news. Good news is there's 2.5 million apps out there, meaning apps are no longer a trend. They're really happening. It's a done thing. The bad news is how do you make your app stand out among the 2.5 million? Um, the average user has 40 apps on their phone, but regularly only uses about 15. Take a look at your phones now. How many apps do you have on there? How many do you actually use? Some are there just for sentimental reasons. Some are there because you purchased it for 99 cents 18 months ago, and you just can't, for some reason, delete it. Um, there's a lot of dead weight. There's a lot of floatsome in, on, on your phone, right? 20% of all apps also are only used once. That's, that's a horrible number. Um, you want to make sure that your app is not one of those, right? Um, and then also, when you're looking at this the mobile ecosystem, it's extremely fragmented. There's a lot of players there. And just making sense of it all is actually really difficult, um, which leads to the, this picture, the Luma landscape. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but it's pretty daunting if you look at it. Um, what this documents is, what this describes, 
is all the people that are involved, all the, all the organizations that are involved in the mobile space right now. This goes from mobile agencies to networks to carriers. Um, it's, over, uh, it's about 1,000 companies. If you look just at those involved in mobile marketing, it's about 460. So who do you talk to? Uh, who, who's the expert? Who, who, who do you go to? Uh, it's quite difficult. It's, it's a really it's a, it's a complicated landscape that you'll need to be able to navigate. <clears throat> and this is what we call the app marketers, the mobile marketers dilemma, right? Um, obviously, the question that we're all looking to, to answer is, how do I succeed? Um, but very much like life and happiness, uh, success is not a destination. Uh, it's a thought process. It's a, it's a journey, right? Uh, it's something that needs to be constantly iterated, right? Um, how do I get loyal users? How do I get more than just downloads? How do I get people who actually engage with my app, who spend through my app, who share through my app? That's the question. It's not about, you know, where can I get the cheapest download? It's where can I get the most valuable users interacting with this? How can I build my community? Um, which traffic source is the best? I mean, there's a lot out there. You have social, which we've all heard about now. We got Facebook and Twitter. Um, you have the traditional display networks. Uh, video is also very popular. You have programmatic buying on RTB exchanges. Um, you got quite a lot of which one is the best for you, and how do you know which is going to be working now and in the future? Um, again, as, as marketers, we have to answer the question, what did you do with my money? When the investors say, you know, uh, we gave you a million bucks, what did you do with it? What do you have to show for it? This ROI, how do you, how do you track what you've spent? How do you show, like, that you've gotten good performance out of that? It was money well worth spent, so you can get that same amount plus 50% next year. Um, tracking that ROI is a huge challenge. I mean, these are all questions, a lot of these apply to marketing in general as a discipline, but specifically on mobile, it's, it's a bit trickier these days because unlike the desktop where you have a persistent identifier like the cookie, where you can e do attribution quite easily, you don't have that on mobile quite yet. It's still kind of a, a patchy, patchy environment, so you need help in kind of navigating that. Um, when starting out, we recommend that you think strategically. Don't just jump right in. Um, we all hear, hear the stories about you know, the supercells, the, the, the apps that, that you know, do great uh, organic uplift, and they're number one in the charts and all that stuff. So when you're new to the game, a lot of people say, how do I get to be number one? Uh, there's two ways to do that. There's an easy way and there's a tough way. Uh, the easy way, you can just drop a few hundred thousand dollars for a weekend, you get to number one, that's it. But nothing magical happens then. You know, it's not like you automatically get all these organic downloads and things just go viral. Um, that's not really a plan. That's not really being strategic. You know, what's your marketing plan? I'm going to go viral. Uh, you need to do a lot more than that. Any app that has gone viral and gotten huge organic uplift has been through many, many iterations. Refining the app, making sure that, you know, listening to the marketplace, listening to the users, putting that back into their marketing and their product roadmap to make the app even better. Then, once they're at a good point, you know, then it makes sense to kind of get that exposure in the top ranks. Um, you need to think about this and, and, and again, think strategically. Um, and track everything. Keep all the data that, I mean, your, the dollars that you spend equal data that you can use. So dollars equals data in this case. When you spend money, you're g getting data. You need to collect that data and feed that back into your organization. Um, again, it's like mistakes. If you learn from a mistake, it's not really a mistake. So there's no such thing as a bad campaign. As long as you keep all the data from it, learn from it, and use that in the next iteration. Um, so, uh, as I've said before, success also comes from casting a really wide net. You need to make sure that you're touching every available source of traffic out there, finding the one that's not just good or great for you, but the one that's perfect for your app and gets the best, not only you know, cost performance, but also in terms of the users that you're building. Um, so it really takes a lot to, you need to think a lot before you just jump right in. And this is also illustrated, I, I love this graph, this is a great one. It shows that change is the norm. Um, what this represents is the spend across all the different networks in the mobile ecosystem over the last four years, right? Um, the width is the amount of spend, and each color is a different source. So you can say each color is a network, right? Um, and you can see it fluctuates greatly. Um, the, short, the short version of this, the punchline to this slide, is that within three months, six months, whatever is the kind of uh, the network of choice today, most likely won't be in six months' time. Um, a lot of these, you can see like when the color just kind of goes down to, you know, they've gone out of business or they've retooled themselves as, as, as a different types of, type of organization. It's very common to hear about networks who then turned into analytic platforms or um, tracking uh, companies, etc. cetera. Um, so in this kind of very fast-paced, ever-changing environment, uh, industry that we're working in, this mobile industry that we're working in, change is the norm, and you have to prepare for that. 
So you start your campaign this quarter. Some traffic sources work well, some don't. Six months from now, you need to revisit that because you know, things will change. More importantly, as, technology, uh, as, as the technology is being developed, it's better, if you can, programmatic buying is really uh, an efficient way of, of actually uh, um, acquiring traffic. Now, programmatic doesn't apply only to RTB. It's an any source uh, where you're able to evaluate placement decisions and execute on them in an automated fashion. Uh, basically, kind of you know, let the machines take over. And this is becoming a lot more popular. Obviously, it is on the desktop as well, but in mobile as well. Um, so it needs to be kept in mind, not just what you buy, but how you buy it. Um, so that's, that's a kind of a brief overview, not to, not to give anyone too much of a fright, but there are a lot of challenges. But there are a lot of challenges because it's a huge opportunity. Um, all I can say is it's fun, you just need to be prepared. Change is the norm, and uh, yeah, just make sure you, uh, you take everything you have and uh, feed it back into your organization so you can keep uh, iterating and, and performing better. Uh, we'll be on the panel for some questions later, but thanks very much for your time. Cheers.